I'm Scott Saponis. I run our medical devices group in Microsoft Healthcare. Microsoft Healthcare is a partner organization kind of in the MSR family. We're actually in the same building with everyone else. Um, we came out of something called MSR Research Next, which is a lot of different projects that are tend to be incubations that have five to 10 to 15 people or more um, all working on just one project rather than maybe a researcher working on a project with a couple other people or working on multiple projects. Um, so one way I, my talk is physiological sensing outside the clinic. I want to give you a little bit of a sense of one of the things that we do in our medical devices group. You've probably already been told this many times that our, our mission at Microsoft to, is to empower every person and every organization on the, on the planet to achieve more. I like to say that our group does that by keeping people alive. That's our main <laughs> mode of empowerment. Um, so what I want to do is give you just a quick tour through one way that uh, we hope to keep people alive. Uh, the way we tend to operate is in, in this medical devices space um, and healthcare in general, there's a lot of places you could try to intervene and change outcomes that, um, uh, medical outcomes that are happening. Uh, you could invent new small molecules, for example. That's something that you see happen in the pharmaceutical industry, and it plays a really big role in how we develop healthcare, or deliver healthcare, and a lot of the changes that have happened in outcome over the last couple hundred years. We don't make small molecules here at Microsoft, probably not too surprising to you. Instead, we tend to use uh, computing in one form or another, whether that's making new devices, writing software, building cloud services. So instead, the way that we try to have an impact on healthcare is we like to find places where there are outcomes that look like they could be a lot better and then ask a question of, is there a role that computing can play in this scenario to hopefully create better outcomes than we have today? So I'm gonna give you a quick tour of one project that we're working on right now, um, but kind of representative of one way of going about and doing this work. Um, and so this is the area of heart failure. Um, so heart failure is a, set of conditions where essentially your heart is not able to pump enough blood. There's a couple things that can cause it, but your heart can't pump enough blood to your body and you don't get enough oxygen to the things that you need to. And what tends to happen in heart failure is you um, do something called decompensate. You end up in an urgent situation. You tend to find yourself in an ER and then an ICU and then you get stabilized um, and you go home and hopefully you uh, stay home for quite some time and you're well for quite some time. But unfortunately, 25% um, of people are readmitted within 30 days of when they leave the hospital with heart failure. And so this is exactly the kind of place where we, we ask the question, could computing play a role here to try and do better? So there's a number of things that you might wanna do um, to try and help this scenario, but most of what it comes down to is you want to try to observe really early when something is going wrong with the patient, create an intervention, and hopefully keep them from ending up in the hospital. So there's a lot of things you measure with a heart failure patient. You might measure weight to see if they're retaining fluid, um, you, and a lot of other things like behavior, are they able to get up and do their normal daily activities? Another one that you wanna do, not surprisingly, is just looking at their cardiac cycle and what is their heart doing. Um, one of the things that you might use to do this in the clinic is something called a tonometer that you can hold on your radial artery and it gives you this waveform. I'm not gonna explain it all today because we only have a couple minutes, but think of it as a way to extract information out about the state of your cardiovascular system. So what we've done in this particular situation is said, okay, I think I see how computing could play a role here. We'll take this thing that you can only do in the hospital today and do it as a workup. Um, and let's turn it into a mobile device that you can wear under your wrist that can just do this all the time when you're awake, when you're sleeping, whatever, and then send that information back. So we make a device from scratch. We then do internal and external validation that it's uh, the same kind of signal that you can get with the kind of device that you use in clinic today. And then we go and test this hypothesis out um, in the field. So we just actually finished collecting the data from 160 patients. Um, from each one of them is somebody with heart failure who wore a device while they were hospitalized, stabilized, and then sent home for 30 days. And then we got the device back from them. And now this is an example of one of these projects where now what we do is go through and try to figure out what can we detect about um, the changes that happen for people whose condition worsened and got readmitted to the hospital. And then in the future, what could we do differently to try to prevent that readmission? That's it. Any questions? Yeah. OK, 
Okay. Hi, I'm Kelly. This is a two-parter. First, uh, what did you study in school? Just curious. <laughs> I, I studied computer science. So I have a PhD in computer science. Um, I actually interned here uh, at MSR uh, three times and then came here as a researcher and have been here ever since. Um, my dissertation was on physiological sensing with electromyography <laughs> for interaction. So for computing purposes um, and then eventually healthcare. Was again? Computer science. No, what was your decision? Oh, physiological sensing for computer input. And so I guess, how did you, coming from like a computer science background, how did you get the information about health that you needed? Was it like a lot of self-studying or collaborating with experts? Like how did you branch into that space? It's both of those things. So our medical devices team has a, a range of uh, different backgrounds in it. So my background is computer science. I'm one of um, two technical people who is not a double E. Um, so everybody, everybody else has a double E as an undergrad and then something else for grad school, whether it's electrical engineering, biomedical engineering, things like that. Uh, so we have a range of expertise. But then for each of these investigations we do, we usually have at least one, if not several, PIs at um, academic medical centers in the US or elsewhere that do the project with us. Thank you. Hi, my um, name is Fabian. Um, in terms of future intervention, what do you envision? Are you thinking of this as collecting the data from the patient at home and then sending that data directly to, um, to you know, the health practitioners or like the physicians and all that? And the second part of my question is, um, are you considering situations where you have like home care workers or community health workers who are supporting these people and increasingly growing more and more as the de facto way of taking care of people with chronic diseases in the US? Yeah, the answer is yes and to both of those questions. I think depending on the disease or the outcome we're trying to modify, there's gonna be different answers. Uh, I think oftentimes one of the ways that we can have impact with computing is to find a scenario where maybe there's a solution that works but it involves specialists, a lot of attention, a lot of money being spent per patient, and it just can't generalize to everybody in the US or everyone in the world, and try to find a way where computing, whether that's with a sensor that can do a lot of the work and it doesn't require as much training to be able to use the sensing technique, um, or other ways, to make it so that a much broader group of people can deliver healthcare. So in the case of um, a home healthcare worker, we want to find ways to build stuff that can fit into the lives of that patient and that healthcare worker and help the healthcare worker like keep that patient from um, decline and then being readmitted to the hospital. All right, well, thank you, Scott, and thanks to all the speakers. Um, that's the end of this session. Thank you.